Good morning. This Mass is being streamed live, and for those of you who are joining us from home, welcome. We're glad you could be with us this morning. Intentions for this morning's liturgy are for those who are facing illness or facing surgery. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace, mercy, and peace of God, our loving Father, be with each of you. And with your spirit. We bring our frailties before the Lord, who died that we might live. And so we pray, Lord Jesus, grant us a share in the fruits of your victory. Forever. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O Christ, keep your people faithful to your ways. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, seal your people with the name of Christian before this world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God then have mercy on us all. Forgive us our sins and bring each of us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, so that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. We plead this through our Lord Jesus, our Christ, your Son, our brother, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Though the testified to by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction. All have sinned and are deprived of the glory of God. They are justified freely by his grace through the redemption in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as an expiation through faith by his blood to prove his righteousness because of the forgiveness of sins previously committed through the forbearance of God, to prove his righteousness in the present time that he might be righteous and justify the one who has faith in Jesus. What occasion is there then for boasting? It is ruled out. On what principle that of works? No, rather on the principle of faith. For we consider that a person is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Does God belong to Jews alone? Does he not belong to Gentiles too? Yes, also to Gentiles. For God is one and will justify the circumcised on the basis of faith and the uncircumcised through faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response will be, with the Lord, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With, With the, the Lord, Lord there, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. With the Lord, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness that you may be revered. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. I trust in the Lord. My soul trusts in his word. My soul waits for the Lord, 
more than sentinels wait for the dawn. With the, the Lord, Lord there is mercy and the fullness of redemption. Your blessing, Father. May the Lord Jesus turn your heart on your lips that you may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. I ask this humbly in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The Lord said, Woe to you who build memorials of the prophets whom your fathers killed. Consequently, you bear witness and give consent to the deeds of your ancestors, for they killed them, and you do the building. Therefore, the wisdom of God said, I will send to them prophets and apostles. Some of them they will kill and persecute, in order that this generation might be charged with the blood of all the prophets shed since the foundation of the world. From the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who died between the altar and the temple building. Yes, I tell you, this generation will be charged with their blood. Woe to you, scholars of the law. You have taken away the key of knowledge. You yourselves did not enter, and you stopped those trying to enter. When Jesus left, the scribes and the Pharisees began to act hostility toward him and in, to interrogate him about many things for they were plotting to catch him with something that he might say. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, there's a great similitude between the two readings this morning in focus and in theme. Therefore, I will take a, a privilege of ranging back and forth in my comments between the two readings, if you will permit me that. Paul speaks about the sins of both pagans and Jews. Everybody has sinned, and everybody has fallen short before God's intent. Therefore, Jesus came and died for all. He did not do that because he owed us or owed the human race anything or that the human race has any earned anything. He died for us out of love. It was a gift thoroughly undeserved on our part. So he argues that all we have to do to be saved is to accept that gift he says, through faith. That's it. That's the heart of the Roman letter. Justification by faith alone. That phrase we've learned when we studied church history, I'm sure, years ago, many of us. That's Luther's interpretation of the theme. Justification by faith alone. Luther said that all a person needs is faith. When God looks at us, he only sees Jesus. Our sinfulness is not thoroughly removed, but covered over by the grace of Christ. The Catholic tradition is different. It asserts that by faith, we admit that, and by the Holy Spirit working within us, we have become, in fact, a new creation. Original sinfulness is not simply covered over, but removed root and branch entirely. So our prayer and our good works in response to the God's love, which we acknowledge, has value precisely as an expressive of our new birth through Christ and through the Holy Spirit. Both Lutheran tradition and Catholic tradition through the centuries have given 
different emphasis to the very same words of St. Paul. Gradually, the two positions hardened. Different vocabularies were free formed. And different theologies grew out of what is essentially an original disparity. The Catholic tradition has always emphasized that our manner of life is really important, not as a bribe to God, but as evidence of the extent to which we have made the love of the Trinity part of our very lives. We respond to God's love. The Gospel says this morning, disparity between status, our position as a religious figure or religious loyalists, between status, that is our reputations, and real conduct, maybe our, you call our authenticity, our faithfulness within, is what Jesus condemns, and he does it in this gospel today. The Pharisees have laid claim to this holy tradition of Judaism, yet they refuse to attend to the fact and further persecuted people who gave expression to the heart of that tradition. They made things difficult for the people. They used their official status as religious leaders to keep, to keep people really away from the authenticness of God himself and from the liberating experience of being saved by responsive love back to God. Even in Old Testament terms, which they should have known, but which they sort of pretended they didn't. What it means to be a child of the covenant. I can put it kind of briefly for you. The covenant basically says in the Jewish tradition, God says, though you be faithless, I will always be faithful because I love you. That's the contrast. Now we want to reflect on that. St. Paul wants us to realize that no one can claim exclusive possession of what God is about. God loves people of all nations and all faiths. Even loves those who don't have any faith at all, that you can see. Anyone who prays to God, the God of love and goodness, and that eliminates anybody who prays to the devil or one of that stuff. But anybody who prays authentically is praying to the same God. The God that Jewish pray to. The God that Catholics and Protestants pray to. The God that Native Americans and Indians pray to. That Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus, and untold numbers of others pray to. If they all pray sincerely. That means all prayers from the heart end up at the same desk in heaven. Wise people of all faiths are those who answer and never stop trying to learn as much truth about God as possible. They will listen, if they are wise, to what people of other faiths have to see about God, the one true God. There's only one God for all of us. He hears the prayers of all and loves all because it happens that all are our brothers and sisters. Paul makes it clear that a proper understanding of salvation 
puts an end to any boasting on our part. He assumes that there's something wrong with a faith that allows a man to be arrogant in matters religious, in matters that are an approach to the divinity. Pride, you might note historically, was a kind of tradition and a temptation for Paul because in the Jewish tradition that he belonged to, it was important to be known as a person of the tradition. And you could boast about that. And he boasted about mastering it, that he was a well-versed Pharisee. And besides that, he was a well-educated Pharisee. He mastered Greek thought also. But the resumption that he came to, the presumption that he came to, is that this had been done for him by God through Jesus Christ. Paul realized that his achievements gave him no grounds for boasting. The meaning and worth of his life came completely from God himself. That admission was tough for Paul to make. The Paul we need to reflect on is a Paul that has notably a penchant for self-justification. Within each of us is that Pharisee lurking. We like to trust our own resources. We enjoy credit for our successes. We are, of course, it's ironic, you know, willing to take credit for our successes. But oddly enough, for our failures, we, we use excuses. We blame other things or other people for our wrongdoings. But there's some truth in that, I think, because it is easier for us and truthful for us in the network of events and causes that, that beset our lives to accept that we are beyond absolute control for many things. For this reason, failure can teach us more than success can teach us. So think about that. We can learn from our mistakes, honestly, more powerfully, and more importantly, than we can learn from our successes. But the nature of this humility and this dependence upon God is not always rightly understood. It is often depended, identified with self-depreciation self and self-doubt by modern psychology. But true humility, true dependence on God is a matter of seeing ourselves as we really are without the distortion of pride and to see others without the distortion of envy. Those two extremes. So we grow, we mature by seeing ourselves in God's light as creatures and as debtors. In God's light, there's never any need for boasting. Never. Jesus would ask us to pray and pray always and pray fervently that we can stand alive and well and strong and upright and know who we are and why we stand where we are in his light, his way, 
is truth. Amen. Now we pray in the spirit of what we have heard this morning. And we respond, Lord and Savior, hear our prayer. Lord and Savior. That all who feel emptiness in their lives, that faith may give them fulfillment personally. For this we pray. We pray that all who pursue a prayerful life may have a constantly growing sense of God's presence, possibly in their lives. Lord and Savior, hear our prayer. We pray that those receiving the sacraments with desire may find strength always in them. Lord and Savior, hear our prayer. That we be granted the love to wipe away the tears of all who weep. For this we pray. Lord and Savior, hear our prayer. We pray that in our dealings with each other, our constant desire may be to make all things new and filled with life. For this we pray. Lord and Savior, hear our prayer. That those who suffer pain, privation, hunger, injustice, the loss of dignity, or the crippling of human ability to be sustained by consolation, divine consolation above all, and our grace caring for them may be grace from God authentically. For this we pray. Lord and Savior, hear our prayer. That our dead may be brought to new and everlasting life and completeness. For this we pray. Lord and Savior, hear our prayer. Lord God, transform the hearts of those intent on harming others or themselves. For this we pray. And, O oh God, you fill the hearts of the hungry with good things. Give us fulfillment in Christ Jesus with the gift of grace and the Spirit. This we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. It is through your goodness that we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, will be for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Lord, by his mingling of wine and water, may we be enabled to share his divinity, who humbled himself to share our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. It is through your goodness, too, that we have this wine to offer, the fruit of the vine, yet the work of our hands. It will be for us a spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, wash away our sins, cleanse us from our iniquity. Pray, my brothers, my sisters, that our sacrifice find favor before God, who is for each of us a loving Father. Of His name, for our good and the good of all is Holy Church. Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant now, we pray, that they may become for us the sacrament of eternal life. And again, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty God, for in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you received, redeemed him and through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble, heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise, even now as we acclaim. Holy, 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 
Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all that is holy. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of At the time he was betrayed, when Jesus willingly entered into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate this memorial of his dying and rising, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. We give thanks to you, for you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister for you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by his Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Barry, our Bishop here, your clergy, priests, deacons, and your religious, your committed witness also, the witnesses who image the kingdom unfolding in our very midst, daily and everywhere. Be mindful of our brothers and sisters. We pray for those who face surgery and therapy. We pray for our beloved dead also. Those who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection. Those who have died then in your mercy. Embrace them in the light of your presence. Have mercy on us too, we pray, that with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you through the ages and made the ages yours, we may merit to be co-heirs too, to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. And now we pray those words that Jesus gave us. 
to pray to his Father and ours. Our Father, who art, who art in, heaven, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our lives, that in the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and anxiety, safe from distress, as we await in blessed hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. To the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, Lord, now and forever. O oh Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, my peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. Look not upon our sinfulness, but upon our faithfulness. And grant each one of us the peace, the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with each of you now. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Let's take this moment to pray through the internet for those who are with us from afar. O oh, Jesus, we believe that you are present in this most blessed sacrament. We love you above all things and desire to take you into our soul. Some of us cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into their hearts. We embrace you, all of us, as if you were already there and unite yourselves completely to you. Never permit us to be separated from you. And there is a priestly prayer that I ask you to give me permission and a moment to say. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not bring me judgment, not bring me condemnation, but through your mercy also, be for me protection in mind and body, a healing remedy always. Amen. This is the Lamb of God. This is he who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we to be called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy. May the body and blood of Christ preserve our soul to life and life without end.
Let them thank the Lord for his mercy, his wonders for the children of men. For he satisfies the thirsty soul and the hungry he fills with good things. Please rise. Let us pray. O oh God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and in the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. And we again and finally say this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Does anyone have a prayer here? The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by the law. Thanks be to God. Be still, my soul, the hour has come, is hastening, when we shall be forever with the Lord. When disappoint men, grief and fear are gone, sorrow forget, love's purest joy restored. Be still, my soul, when change and tears are past, all safe and blessed we shall meet at last. May I thank those who ministered.